For more on the vaccine rollout in the UK, what could happen here in the US? We bring in infectious disease specialist and ABC News medical contributor, Dr. Todd Ellerin. Dr. Ellerin, we are seeing the vaccine being deployed in the UK. The FDA believed to be on the verge of granting emergency authorization for Pfizer's vaccine here in the US. What do you think about how people here should see it? Should they be confident about the safety of the vaccine? Oh, Deirdre, I think they should be very confident. I mean, when you think about the Pfizer vaccine at 95% effectiveness at preventing disease, when you think about the fact that so far severe disease was only seen in one um, uh, vaccine participant, nine placebo participants, when you look at the overall numbers, 162 cases in the placebo group, eight cases in the vaccine group. This is extraordinary. No serious adverse events at an increased risk beyond placebo. Again, that's not to say that the shot doesn't hurt. It can. It doesn't say that there won't be, you know, aches and, and fevers. Those will happen. Um, and this is not just the flu shot. There it is more, there's more, um, it's called more reactogenic. But the bottom line is this looks effective. It looks safe. And hopefully when enough people get vaccinated, ultimately this will end this epidemic in the U.S. and hopefully the pandemic around the world. Dr. Ellen, we just heard that one of the vaccine developments announced a setback in its quest for a COVID vaccine based on decreased immune response in older patients. What does that say to you about your patients who are older? That's right. You're, you're talking about um, the GSK and Sanofi's uh, phase one, two trial. And um, what it basically says is the unprecedented speed and the extraordinary results at which Pfizer and Moderna vaccines have been developed, it belies the truth with respect to vaccine development. The majority of these fail, and they often fail in phase one, because what looked very promising in animals, humans don't necessarily react that way. So. You know, I think it may be a little bit of back to the drawing board with, with GSK uh, and Sanofi. Remember, they are giants in vaccine development. They know how to do this. I'm confident that maybe they have to use more antigen, but of course it's very important that they make sure that there's a, a robust immune response in the older people as well because that's the most vulnerable. The other thing it says, Deirdre, though, is that they're being transparent, and this is what we want. This is why we want to trust the scientists scientific integrity of these great vaccine developers developers and and pharma who are bringing us these vaccines and to your point there are numerous companies that are working towards the same goal all at once so that's encouraging just for the world scientific community and then of course for all the citizens now how long after we get the vaccine do we need to continue wearing masks and following all the safety protocols that we are it's such an important question. And remember something, I just told you that the Pfizer vaccine prevented 95% of disease. But what I didn't tell you and what we don't know yet is how much infection does it prevent? Because remember, a lot of people who, who get infected are asymptomatic and may still be able to transmit it. We don't have that information yet. So we can't say how well these vaccines will prevent transmission. So the answer is getting this vaccine is not a license to take off your mask. It's not a license to get right up front in someone's face. It's not a license to stop washing our hands. And we still want to avoid crowds. So hopefully with time, we'll learn about this. Do I believe that ultimately we're going to be able to take our masks off? I do. I'm thinking more like maybe the second half of 2021. But remember, as we learn more from these clinical trials about overall infection and the differential, we'll, I'll, I'll be able to give you a better sense of that. But very good advice in the meantime, good guidance. Dr. Todd Ellerin, thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.